Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we ask the city clerk to read the quote for the week, I'd like to welcome back all the aldermen that ran for election. Uh, congratulations to the ones that are back and the new ones. Congratulations to you, too. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. There are two ways of meeting difficulties. You alter the difficulties or you alter yourself meeting them. Thank you very much. Call the 25th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. Wangaman? Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. This time I ask Alderman Vanderweel to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignation. Attorney McLean. Thank you. Uh, there's a letter dated March 27th this year to the mayor. It's been an honor to serve the city of Sheboygan as a representative for the past four years. Please accept this letter of my formal resignation for my position of alder person for District 6 starting April 1, 2008, due to my moving out of the area. Thank you. Respectfully submitted, Bonnie Smith. I'd ask for a motion to accept. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept and uh, also thank Bonnie Smith for her four years of service. Thank you. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Uh, first on our list this evening is Henry Capitillo. Mr. Capitillo, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. The reason I'm here today is to clarify on what the mayor said after my last presentation to the council on March 17, 2008. If I recall, he said something to the effect that just because individuals say things during the public forum, it does not mean that they are so. I would like to let the council know that any information that I provide to this council has been thoroughly researched. I know that some of the salary figures that I quoted may have concerned the mayor, and rightly so. I also was taken back to see what some of the mayor's appointments are now earning. As concerning as it may be, the information that was used to quote these salaries came directly from open records requests to the city departments that also included the mayor's former assistant, Susan Hart. Jenny Rosinger, the individual that the mayor had a dispute with her link to the Sheboygan Police Department, made these open rec records requests. If the information is not accurate, then the city of Sheboygan has to look at the methods of their record keeping. The intent of my previous presentation was to impress on the council that, when, that you should be consistent when dealing with hiring and salary increases in the city of Sheboygan for employees, no matter if they are represented by a bargaining unit or not. I give the council credit to offer early retirement packages to city employees in order to generate cost savings for the city of Sheboygan. Just remember that it defeats your purpose for cost savings if when when and if you elect to refill these positions, that you start these individuals way above the starting salaries for the positions that you look to refill. I give examples. I gave two examples 
the last time I was here to show how the refilling of the city assessor and the IT positions at salaries quite above the starting range would have an impact on cost savings to the city and the taxpayer. I have passed out three spreadsheets that exemplify the effect of starting individuals at a higher level than the starting salary. The red spreadsheet gives a, a projection of a five-year appointment that the city normally does for city head, department head or department heads. This spreadsheet shows the city assessor position that what might have happened if the deputy assessor would have been promoted to the assessor position and a new deputy director was hired at $40,000 and if the present city assessor would have been hired, would, would have been promoted to $60,000 and the individual that was the city assessor would have been also hired at the $60,000 range. All of the projections include a 3% annual salary increase and the present 12.2% retirement paid by the city. If you look at that spreadsheet, the uh, cost savings for the deputy assessor was prom if promoted to and paid $60,000 in the five-year period would have generated savings to the city of $75,884. Cost savings if the new deputy uh, assessor would have been hired at a lower salary, that would have saved 86486 a total of $162,371 for a period of five years. If you look at just hiring the city assessor at the starting salary versus what was hired at, the cost savings would have been $94,000 within a five-year period of time. If you look at hiring the city assessor even at a higher rate than the starting salary of $60,000, you would have a cost savings of $75,884 within a five-year period of time. The blue spreadsheet shows the difference between the salary grade 14 and salary 13. This is important because I believe the Salary and Grievance Committee on their September 24, 2007 changed the IT position to salary grade 13 instead of 14. So when the new position was hired, the city would save more money. This spreadsheet also includes a 3% annual increase and the present 12.2% retirement paid by the city for the five-year appointment. So if, and in that, the projections for, for that would be that if the present, well, the present uh, IT person is actually at 22% above what the salary starting range is. The green spreadsheet is an overview of the IT position versus what's, what was in place previously, the information system manager and some projected cost savings. The sheet also includes a 3% annual salary increase and the present 122 retirement paid by the city for the five-year appointed projection. The salaries include the present IT salary and the present information systems manager that was in place at that time. Excuse me, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So if you look at the, uh, the, grid, the green spreadsheet, the cost savings for the hiring at, at the starting salary, or the starting salary is 86473 what the present rate is now for the IT position. That is 22% above the starting salary. The cost savings for, from switching from the previous information management specialist to the IT position within that five period of, of uh, contract period, you only save $38,000. So if you look, so now the spreadsheets that I developed have accurate salaries and accurate retirement figures that are presently in place today. The only projections that I made were the 3% annual increases, what is in place to what is in place today could actually be more. It does not include any FICA withholding, UC, or workman's comp, or any medical costs, so any savings on those areas would also be additional savings Excuse when you me, calculate. Mary. Your one minute is up. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on our list would be Dulcie Johnson. Do 
Kelsey, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Perez and members of the council, you have on your agenda tonight a resolution which would allow department heads to reside within the boundaries of the Sheboygan Area School District. The council has just made an inch of progress on the residency issue by getting the fire department to agree that all new hires must live in the city for five years. Not requiring department heads to live in the city is a step backwards. I strongly believe that all city employees should live in the city. They are paid with tax dollars from the residents of the city and should be required to help pay the burden <clears throat> of their high wages and benefits, which locally amounts to 35% more than the private sector according to recent information presented at the Salaries and Grievances Committee. I believe that if employees have a vested interest in their place of employment, they will be better employees. In the March 18th Sheboygan Press story, Alderman Hanna is quoted as calling for a thorough discussion to see if there's a way to open the doors for some talented people, presumably in the Sheboygan Area School District, to work for us. However, Alderman Hanna was present at the Salaries and Grievance Committee meeting last Wednesday, and other than a comment by Alderman Heidemann, there was no discussion. Perhaps all the discussion had taken place before the meeting. Alderman Heidemann voted no. Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, and Geisha voted yes. Per comments made by Alderman Hanna in the Sheboygan Press story, one gets the impression that only candidates from the city of Sheboygan have been considered for the position of finance director. Quoting from this article, Hannah thinks it might be able to draw more applicants if it had a larger area from which to select candidates. Has the search for a finance director been limited to people currently residing in the city of Sheboygan? This would be a departure from recruiting efforts for other department heads. Our new public works director is from Rockford, Illinois. The new city assessor moved here from Madison. Indeed, the person who declined the finance pos director position some months ago obviously did not live in the city. Word is that he turned the job down because he has several large dogs, which require a couple of acres for exercise, and providing for his dogs was more important than moving to the city to be our finance director. The only tax connection between residents of the city of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Area School District is that all residents of these entities pay a portion of their taxes to the Sheboygan Area School District. Sheboygan Area School District residents do not, who do not live within the city of Sheboygan pay no taxes to the city. Indeed, the Sheboygan Area School District extends into Manitowoc County. So if the council passes this resolution, city of department heads could live in Manitowoc County. Unbelievable. At the Salaries and Grievances Committee meeting, Alderman Hanna proposed an amendment to his resolution, whereby this person would have to pay the city the difference between the tax rate where they reside and what they would pay if they lived in the city. So the city might get $1,000, and the city would pay this person around $90,000, plus benefits of about $40,000. I'm no financial guru, but I would say that a return of $130,000 on an investment of $1,000 is a pretty good return. And the frosting on the cake is that this person would not have to move into our apparently dreadful city. Is the council so desperate for an additional $1,000 in taxes that you would change the residency rule to accommodate one person who doesn't want to live in the city? Why would you give this golden person so much power? A person who does not live in the city of Sheboygan, who does not pay taxes to the city of Sheboygan, a person who cannot vote for any of you. Why would you give this person so much power? Actually, this thing seems rather transparent. The prevailing presumption is that Alderman Hanna knows of someone within the boundaries of the Sheboygan Area School District who wants to become the city's finance director but doesn't want to move into the city. I cannot believe that the council would change the residency rule to accommodate this person. The city has just recently hired three new department heads. Two have already moved to the city. The third is in process of selling his house to relocate to Sheboygan. Evidently, they did not have a problem with the residency rule. Allowing a potential employee to set the conditions of employment makes the council look impotent and sends the message that the city of Sheboygan is such an undesirable place that department heads should not be expected to live here. If this person has so little interest in being a part of the community for which they work and whose salary and benefits are paid for by the taxpayers of this community, that person needs to stay where they are or look elsewhere for a job. Residing in the city should be a condition of employment, not an option dictated by the candidate. The husband of a friend of my daughter is a firefighter in Milwaukee. In order to accept his job as a Milwaukee firefighter, the family had to move from the suburbs into Milwaukee. 
And I remember reading about another Milwaukee situation where a person who just lived outside the Milwaukee city limits was offered a position but had to move into the city to be hired for the job. Obviously, some municipalities understand the connection between city employment and residency. Excuse me, Delcy, would you like your extra minute? Please. Go ahead. This resolution is about the people who submit the budgets that your constituents have to pay for. They should help pay for what they request of the taxpayers. Department heads should set an example for those who work for them and should be proud to live in the city for which they work. I cannot believe that there are not good candidates for the position of finance director who would not move to our city. <clears throat> in fact, I am told that a city resident has submitted an application today for the position. Don't sell our city short. Think about the message your vote sends about our city. Put your constituents first on your agenda, not some person who doesn't want to live here. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Jack Wirtz. And Mr. Wirtz, could you give me your home address, please? 47 Winnebago Place, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. I won't need it. Okay. Mayor Perez, members of the Common Council, I'm speaking this evening as president of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. It is not our intent to lecture you, but to urge you to maintain the residence requirement for all department heads of the city of Sheboygan. If someone was selected for a position and he lived in another county or even another state, we would expect him to move to our city to be on top of and in close contact with the workings of the department he was heading up. The mayor must reside in the city. Elected officials such as yourselves are required to live here. The department heads should be required to do the same. The pros and cons of this issue can be debated endlessly. But the issue of loyalty to your employer by residing in the city is not debatable. It is an obligation. We feel strongly about this and ask that you retain this requirement. We would hate to see a mass exodus of current department heads, which in fact would be entirely possible if this was passed. On behalf of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, I want to thank you for the opportunity to appear before you this evening. Thank you, sir. And the last on our list would be Kristen Blanchard. And Kristen, you probably want to pull that mic down a little bit for you. There you go. Thanks. And I need your home address, Kristen. Uh, 1012 North 27th Street. 1012 North, North 27th Street. Sorry, my voice is very bad tonight. That's OK. OK, you will have five minutes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor and the Council. I'm here tonight. Um, I'm the Executive Director of Sheboygan County Interfaith Organization. and. Um, since 1993, we've had a farmer's market within the Sheboygan County community. And here in the city of Sheboygan, it's been at a Fountain Park. And we're asking for a 10-year commitment from the city to hold the farmer's market um, at Fountain Park. And the reason uh, being is because we're looking at some federal and state grants um, that would allow us to expand the farmer's market, build upon its goals, which is to work towards helping local farmers remain vibrant, educate the community on healthy eating, and provide a social experience that helps build the community. And we feel that we've been doing this, and by allowing 10 years, <clears throat> sorry, by allowing us to have 10 years, a 10-year location would allow us to go to the federal government um, and be able to look at grants like the Senior Nutrition Program and Buy Local by Wisconsin through the state of Wisconsin um, and uh, be able to provide these services to the city, uh, which is so desperately needed. Um, in the past year, we were able to serve 195 senior households which about $6,000 so that they could receive fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as over 1,000 WIC families to also 
provide them fresh fruits and vegetables, things that they're not, that they don't receive um, regularly from these programs. The other exciting thing with, um, with these grants is that it would allow us to um, build upon programs such as a EBT program, which is, for those of you that don't know, your debit cards that you swish everywhere. Um, it, would be, it would allow us to be able to look at uh, getting debit cards for the farmer's market so that our um, low-income individuals that receive a, sorry, <coughs> Um, that uh, our low-income individuals that receive food stamps would be able to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables. Again, another thing that they're not able to purchase on a regular basis by through their food stamp program at this time. So we're really excited. We'd love your support uh, to do this with us. We know that there's a five-year commitment on the um, docket tonight, and we're really hoping for 10 years so that we are able to write these grants, able to get the support, and able to bring um, bring more farmers markets, fresh fruits and vegetables, and all this wonderful thing to the community. Thank you. Sorry, I'm so bad tonight. <laughs> you did fine. <clears throat> Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you uh all of you who addressed the council tonight, citizens, thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is we have four hearings. I will read each one and ask if there's anyone that would like to address the council with respect to any one of the four. If you'd like to, please step up to the podium and announce which item you would like to address, which uh, hearing you would like to address. The first one is to confirm the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district one. The second hearing to confirm the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district two. The next hearing to confirm the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district four. The fourth and final hearing to confirm the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district five. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? There are none. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Motion and second to close the hearings. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Next item is the consent agenda 25-1 through 25-20. President Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I would move that uh, all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second for the approval of the consent agenda under discussion, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull 2512 and send that back to committee. This is the issue um, with the farmer's market and we just had an explanation as to why they need a 10-year a contract with the city, and I would like us to look at this a little further and, ho and possibly honor them. Would you like to make that motion? Yes. Is there a second? There's a second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on forwarding it back to a public works committee? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Balance of the consent agenda 25 1 through 25 20, except in 12. Any more discussion? <clears throat> There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Balk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. And Wangeman? 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 21, 2521 through 2524 to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 2525, 
I'll hold for 2542. Please make that notation. 2526. 2525, we're going to hold it for when we act on 2542. Yes. yes. Any other questions? 2526 lies over. 2527 lies over to the May 5th meeting. 2528 to 2541 to be referred. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to uh, bring forward uh, document number 2535, and I'd like to make a motion to file the RO. Second. Motion and second to file 2535. Yeah. Second. second. Alderman Montemayor, did you wish to speak on that? Or? I was going to do the, make the same motion that Alderman Boren did, and I'd like to second it, or third it, or fourth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can only go up to two, so you, you, you're second. And uh, there's a motion to file 2535 under discussion. On the motion to file, we have no one. Alderman Favor say aye. Alderman Kittleson, do you wish to speak? Yes, please. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, I just wondered, is there some way that we are going to respond to this communication if we choose to file it? Uh, can we um, address that, maybe? We, we don't generally respond to communications other than what, what the other council than acts on. Okay. Right. All right. So then this constituent would not be responded to at all? To We, no. ne we never okay. have. We Thank never you. Have. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Rehassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in response to uh, Alderman Kittleson's question, I'd like to take this opportunity just to respond to this communication that came in from my district. Uh, I had hoped not to sit here in front of the public and explain my family situation as it related to Alderman Lewandowski's, not Alderman Lewandowski, he was a political opponent of mine, so I apologize, but to uh, respond, I had not planned on responding to him, but I'd like to take this opportunity to do so, considering the gross misrepresentation that took place in this communication. Um, a number of you have talked to me in the last year or so, realize that this past year has been, past year and a half has probably been the toughest year that I can remember in recent memory and um, for two reasons. I mean, I have my little boy Danny, as a lot of you realize, shortly after he was born he was diagnosed with a major, major brain malformation. A number of hospital visits, as you can imagine, at the children's hospitals both in, Man in Madison and Milwaukee and elsewhere, followed by some pretty extensive brain surgery and to this day he receives therapy five days a week. Um, to help remedy some of the issues that he was born with. Um, so you can imagine the amount of commitment and time that it takes to deal with such an issue. In addition to that, right prior to my son being diagnosed with that condition, my wife was diagnosed uh, as having Graves' disease, which that itself required numerous trips up to the Mayo Clinic up in Rochester. Again, a lot of checkups prior to, I believe, four or five different major surgeries to help to correct her condition and a number of follow-ups after that. We hope that both conditions with my son and my wife are under control, but it's something that will take some time to, to bear out. Um, like I said, I'm not sharing this because I'm looking for any sympathy, but I feel as though after reading Mr. Lewandowski's letter, uh, it was just so grossly misrepresented of my position um, that I think I needed to say something. And I say mi misrepresented not because of the fact that I have missed some council meetings, but because of the fact that I've resigned from most all of the committees that he is referring to me as having missed over the last seven or eight months. Uh, I think city record will show that I resigned late last August from my chair of salary and grievance, which subsequently relieves me of all my committee duties, I believe on six other committees. Um, so I wish Mr. Lewandowski, one, would have given me a call or two, dug a little deeper into the city records to realize that I was not obligated to attend these committee meetings. Um, you know, I, you know, I was thinking about this today because a, lo a lot of emotions go through your mind when you're thinking about this. A lot of the past and, you know, and trying to rationalize this and, and justify it. I don't feel the need to justify it. Um, Mayor, you and I have spoke quite often over the last year, making every attempt to attend every meeting that I can. Um, and when I could not, I would communicate to you. Um, you know, being an alderman is not just a Monday night job here at the council. It's a seven day a week job. So when I get calls on a Sunday night, explaining that their neighbor is too noisy or smoke is coming into the yard or a call on a Tuesday morning about their basement flooding. 
Um, that's where the job is at, not just here on a Monday night. So if Mr. Lewandowski finds it interesting to mathematically point out what percentage of meetings that I've been at, I think he should also be aware of the seven-day commitment beyond just those meetings. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity as well just to reassure my constituents that their views are being represented, those that I spoke with them over the last two years, those of lowering costs, being fiscally responsible, and so on. Um, so with that, I'd like to leave it at that, and I appreciate the opportunity to explain my position. Thank you, Alderman Verhassel, and uh, I empathize with you. I'm, I'm sorry you had to explain family matters that are obviously very confidential and very hurtful to you. Uh, in my mind, there was no need for that, but you did that. I commend you uh, for your courage, and I think it's time to move on. There's a motion to file, 2535. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please make notation also that the next one, 2536, there's no indication of where it's being referred to. That is going to public protection and safety. Resolutions introduced three, 2542 by Alder Person Meyer, authorizing entering into a contract for the Niagara Avenue paving North 7th Street to North 8th Street in parking in parking lot number 14, reconstruction, bid number 2322. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this point, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection to that? Otherwise, we'll move on. Please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I just want to explain the reason for suspension is to get this process moving. Um, everything is in place, and time is of the essence and it would be nice to get this project started. And with that, I would ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. And would you okay. please add to file 2525? file 25. Accept and file, 2525. Accept and file 2525. Thank you. So again, the motion is uh, to put resolution upon its passage and accept and file 2525. Please make that notation. Mm -hmm. And just under further discussion so that the public is aware, uh, this is the uh, the, uh, the small section of street that will reopen Niagara Avenue right in front of the Grand State uh, Hotel, uh, which everybody has been, mostly everybody has been commenting. It's going to be a great idea. So I th we all look forward to that. There is a motion on the floor. Uh, please call the roll. Balk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2543 by older person Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, Gisha, and Bauk, authorizing the sale of land in the Sheboygan Business Center. President Hannah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I have to ask for a suspension of the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Would Second. you please explain the suspension? Certainly. Uh, this has to deal with 2543 and 2551 uh, have to deal with the, the timely sale of some land in our business park. Um, maybe Attorney McLean could emphasize that for a second. Anything to add, Attorney McLean? Uh, just that this, the, uh, the offer to purchase did come in at the last council meeting, but it did not have an accompanying resolution authorizing accepting it. So. It really has been before the council on two readings, but the resolution itself had not. So, and uh, this is for Wisconsin Power and Light, and they're interested in purchasing land and the business park and getting going with construction. Okay. Thank so you. then all we need is a motion to put it upon its passage, accept and, and adopt 2551. I would move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage right. and move to adopt 2551. And there's a second to that motion. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2544 through 2546 lies over. 2547 through 48 
to be referred. Please note on 2547, it also does not indicate which committee is being referred to. That will be referred to Finance Committee. Report of Committee 6, 2549 by Law and Licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 7792 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Bourne. <coughs> Your Honor, I was unable to attend that meeting, so I'd like to defer that to uh, Alderman Wangaman, who was uh, taking my place at last Tuesday night's meeting. He has the details. Thank you very much. Alderman Wangaman. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to uh, accept and adopt the report of committee. Is there a motion and second under discussion? Uh, is Mr. Bergerman in the uh, chamber? Mr. Bergerman is not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, the committee decided to deny the license uh, due to his uh, uncooperative attitude with the committee. He was called in to appear before us twice, failed to appear both times. And uh, after that, the uh, committee uh, made a motion to uh, deny the, the uh, taxi driver license number 7792. Very well. Thank you. Holman. Any further discussion? <coughs> Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Attorney McLean, I didn't have a chance to talk to you before the meeting on both of this one and the next document. Because I wasn't at the meeting, do you think I should, should abstain or should I go ahead and vote on these? I, I don't believe your not being at law and licensing would have any bearing on your ability to vote here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Gisha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2550 by law and licensing. Recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 7806 based on public safety concerns. The applicant's pending law violation substantially related to the licensed activity and the applicant's failure to fully reveal their record on the license application. Uh, Alderman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion we accept and uh, adopt a report of committee. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Is uh, Mr. Schmidt in the courtroom or in the uh, chamber? He's not here, Your Honor. Thank you, please proceed. Uh, due to the, uh, his failure to reveal numerous violations that were directly related to the license activity, the committee had decided to uh, deny the license on those grounds, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Alderman Wangman. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangerman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2551 was already acted on with 2553, I mean 43. Report of committee is 7, 2552 to be, lies over, I should say. 2553 will be referred. Report of committees. 2554 by finance, recommending the refinancing of the 1997 city of Sheboygan callable marina bond and passing the attached substitute resolution. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> First, I would like to uh, have the report of committee accepted and adopted, and secondly, put the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2555 by Naming Rights Committee, recommending the naming the city of Sheboygan's Blue Harbor Conference Center, the Michael D. Muth Convention Center at Blue Harbor, and passing the attached substitute resolution stating that the city shall cause a bronze plaque bearing Muth's raised image and text explaining the dedication to be placed in a prominent location at the convention center. 
President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to accept and adopt the report of committee, and secondly, place the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Clayness. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Grinfleisch. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ryan. Aye. For Vanderbilt. No. For Hasselt. Aye. Wongaman. No. Born. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, Heideman. No. And Kittleson. Aye. Twelve eyes, three noes. Motion carries. 2556 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget establishing revenue and appropriation for donations received for Independence Day from Johnsonville Sausage LLC. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to accept and adopt the report of committee and place the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of the 1,300 members of Johnsonville Sausage, we'd just like to uh, uh, acknowledge and, and show our appreciation for the long history of Johnsonville's relationship with the city of Sheboygan and, and now the current relationship, which is supporting the fireworks. We're just very grateful to be part of that, and we look forward to the 4th of July. Absolutely, and a big thanks to the Johnsonville company and family. Any other comments? <laughs> there is none. Please call roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wonkerman, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clyunas. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2557 by finance, recommending <coughs> authorizing the sale of land in the Sheboygan Business Center. President Hannah. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to accept and adopt the reported committee and then place the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangerman. Aye. Born. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. No. And Manny. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 25-58. got one more. Hold my hand yeah. <laughs> By finance, recommending authorizing the transfer of funds for the sanitary sewer rehabilitation project schedule for 2008 as part of the city street resurfacing program and design services for the western sanitary interceptor sewer rehabilitation project and passing the attached substitute resolution. President Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to accept and adopt the report of committee and then place the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wonkerman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. By public, uh, 2559 by Public Works, authorizing the transfer of funds for the sanitary sewer rehabilitation projects scheduled for 2008 as part of the C Street Resurfacing Program and design services for the Western Sanitary Interceptor Sewer Rehabilitation Project and passing the attached substitute resolution as presented by, to council by the committee, by the Finance Committee this evening. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to accept and adopt the RC and put the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. And Montemayor. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 9, 2560 by salary and grievances recommending repealing Section 29-3 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code 
in creating new section 82-3 of the current Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to residency and passing this attached substitute resolution. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RC and the substitute ordin ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. Alderman Bauk, you go first. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh, I must have misread this when I looked at it the first time, and it was uh, Dulcie Johnson's uh, presentation tonight that made me scratch my head and reread it. Uh, if I could get some clarification from, um, from the committee. On paragraph B, it, it is not, uh, I'm going to make a statement, and you tell me whether I'm right or not. If the person pays less where they live than they pay here, they won't necessarily be paying the difference between what they pay where they live and what they would pay here. They're only paying a thousand dollars. Is that? That's Alderman, not. Alderman Geisha, please respond. Thank you, Your Honor. No, uh, that was an incorrect statement uh, made at public forum. Uh, the uh, the the difference that they would pay is, let's say the property is in the town of Wilson. If that property was in the city of Sheboygan, the city assessor gets involved and whatever that property value assessment would be for the city of Sheboygan is what the difference they would pay. So uh, they would be required to make up the shortfall. So if I could just follow up, Mr. Mayor, just mm -hmm. want to be really clear. So if in Sheboygan they would owe $8,000 a year and in Wilson they would owe $4,000 a year, they would somehow make a $4,000 commitment to the city of Sheboygan, the difference between eight and four. That's, so that $1,000... Dollars. I'm not quite understanding what that thousand dollar comment is. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, I think President Hanna, you want to clarify that? Yes. What thousand dollars is if they rent in the town of Wilson and they don't own and there's no way we can assess it, there's a thousand dollars. Good clarification, President Hanna. Next uh, on the uh, got a lot got a lot of lights popping up over here. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, looking at our, our Sheboygan Code today, we have a residency requirement um, in place. We have the ordinance. It's very simple, easy to understand. So I, I don't know why we need to complicate things. Um, we're required to live in the, the, the department heads are required to live in the city. And upon six months of their date of hire, it, it's a requirement of the job. Um, we've asked others to do it in the past, and I feel we should continue the practice. So I will not be supporting the uh, uh, document 2560. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm taking everybody in line, so if you've hit your light, wait your turn, please. Uh, Vice President Bourne, you're next. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm not going to support this either tonight. Uh, gosh, as... Uh, We've had we've had department heads living in the city of Sheboygan for many many years, and I just think it's it's uh, starting a slippery slope if we start making uh, exceptions for individuals. You know, s besides the finance director, we've got uh, the IT position. Uh, I'm sorry, the human resources position coming up, and just say hypothetically, you know, that person would have uh, four horses, and they want to have a farm down in Random Lake. Then we're going to have to change we're going to have to change the ordinance again so they can live in the city. And uh, then uh, when we fill the purchasing director uh, policy, you know, this individual might have a, a nice farm, uh, a nice farm uh, in Calumet County. So we're going to have to change the, uh, the residency requirement again. It's a slippery slope. And, and also, if our fine fire chief uh, uh, would decide to get a job as a, as a career advancement in another community, uh, and we have to hire a new uh, fire chief, this ordinance would allow the fire chief not to live in the city, but with the recent agreement, his people that are being hired would have to live in the city. So again, it, it has a potential of creating a, a lot of hard feelings. Uh, I, there was an email that was sent out recently by uh, Mr. Lutsky, our new city assessor, and he was hired under the assumption that he was going to have to live in the city. He moved up here from Madison, and he believes the, the current ordinance with having department heads having to live in the city is, a well, is well thought out. <clears throat> and he goes on to say that uh, he's passionate about the welfare of his community and would support a residency requirement, as a matter of fact, for all city employees, with the except the ones that are now living out the city, outside the city. Uh, the city doesn't need, need talented professionals who enjoy the benefits provided uh, by them 
from the citizens yet feel the city isn't up to their residency standards. Living here, spending money here, and seeing what's wrong motivates me uh, to do what's right uh, by my neighbor. I guess this was the, getting this from a recent hire department head, I guess was the tilting thing for me. I had kind of an open mind on it before, but I think we're just going down a slippery slope if we change this policy for one candidate. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Reflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, very well spoken. I agree with everything that has been said so far. Uh, my point with this one, though, is I understand the difficulty of perhaps recruiting for people. When they get to a certain stage in life, they would like to build their nice house in their one acre of land and, and have you know, the area for the dogs or for the horses. Um, I think if they're looking for something with the horses, perhaps they're, they're looking you know, for the wrong kind of job to be a city uh, department head. Uh, but I do understand the, the concept of getting to a stage in life and wanting to build. We are very tight in the city of building areas that we can't really expand. You know, they can't build on because we don't have land to build on available right now. I think that points to the larger problem that's been historically the problem in Sheboygan for the last 25 years is that we haven't been aggressive in finding new areas to locate properties, uh, to expand, to do new developments and or annex so that people may have area. They can live in the city and they can do everything else. So I also will not uh, support this today. I think it's the bigger problem is that, that the city needs to take a broader approach and look at expansion and moving the borders and, and annexing um, so that we do have some areas that people can build their houses for. Um, my understanding is that we also already have six uh, exceptions that are listed here as well currently on the books. I know the Board of Water Works is one uh, that we provide an exception for. So, <clears throat> you know, we're already looking at that way. I think I agree. It's a slippery slope, and I think we need to take a different approach. And if, if people are looking at area and land they can build within the city, we need to find them the land and build in the city, but not necessarily allow them to build outside. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have Alderman Clayness. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree with everything that was said. I also think in the math, sorry, sorry about that. I also think in the math part of it, if uh, Tano Wilson is getting 4,000 and we're only getting 4,000, we're still missing 8,000. I mean, if they be paying taxes and our assessment would have been 8,000, we would only get half of that, the difference, which I don't think is, you know, it's, it's not the whole, the whole picture or the whole pie. So I think the math on this is, is uh, faulty. Thank you. Next, we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also will not be supporting this. Um, I, my belief is if you work in the city, you should live in the city, especially as department heads living within the city limits. Uh, you get a lot of feedback from your neighbors. You know, uh, as, as older persons, we're required to live in a, in a very limited area in our, in our districts um, because you get a lot of feedback. From the, from the local <laughs> folks that you, that you see every day. And if you're living outside the city limits, I don't think you get that. So I, uh, I will not be supporting this. Um, and in, in defense of uh, Dulcie Johnson and her uh, public forum, I believe that $1,000 figure she had was just an example. I don't believe it was a, it had meant to be a, a factual figure. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, last year in my debates uh, during the campaign when I was running, this question came up. And I answered it by saying, um, as an employer, I want access to the, what I call the deep end of the talent pool. You want a broad net and be able to recruit people. Uh, and I said that there, it ju there's something that just feels unfair, though, to the constituency, to our neighbors, and to myself about uh, hiring someone from outside and them not having the commitment uh, that the city assessor wrote about in his email. And so uh, I want to thank uh, Dulcie for her comments tonight because that combined with the assessor's letter and some of the dialogue here tonight has changed my mind. I came in uh, assuming that they, we were going to get half of their tax bill. I thought it was a pretty good compromise for access to talent. But I think I've changed my mind, and I, I won't be supporting this tonight uh, because that, that perception of unfairness, there really is something unfair about people taking our paycheck and not wanting to pay our taxes. So thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Moat. Next we have Alderman Verhesselt. Thank you, Your Honor. I've had the opportunity to hire people in my career, so I understand the value of having flexible hiring practices and in the effort to get the best available candidate. But I think this is a little bit different. I really like the idea of having city employees seeing the results of their work and living in the neighborhood seeing the results of their efforts on a day-to-day -day basis. I've also served on the Salary and Grievance <coughs> Committee for some time and, and been involved in a lot of discussions about hiring people and needing to make wage provisions, um, you know, hiring towards the higher end of the pay scale to, in order to attract people to the city of Sheboygan. 
So I think it's a little ironic that if we're making those efforts financially to bring people here, and then when they finally get here, we say, you don't really need to live here. You can live anywhere in this neighborhood. You know, I don't think that exactly lines up. So I, I won't support this as well. Uh, President Hannah? No, oh, thank you. Well, this was absolutely the discussion I hoped would happen. Uh, you know, when, we, when we've talked about this, if we're recruiting people to Sheboygan, every once in a while, we need to discuss this. Is this, is this something we want to have in place? And it sure sounds like, yes, it's something we want to have in place, that residency is important to people. Uh, I've chosen to live here in Sheboygan. My horse lives in Elkhart Lake, and it's just a choice we've made. Um, <laughs> if he starts working for us, he's going to move. That's right. We'll move the horse. <laughs> Alton Gisha, you're next, sir. Thank you. Um, I think Alderman Hanna did mention in, his, in the quote in the paper that he wanted to get discussion about this, and I think that was mentioned earlier in public forum, and this is great discussion. Yeah. Another point, and I don't disagree with anything that's been said, um, another point is times are changing. I mean, at two household incomes where maybe one works in Milwaukee or Port Washington, one works in Sheboygan, living in between, even the types of homes people are building are changing. They're great rooms and, and uh, large, big yards and and uh, it's not unusual because of I-43. I know for five years I commuted to Waukesha to an office. Um, there's just, uh, I'm glad we're having discussion because there is more than just, uh, the world does change and it is good to review and refresh these once in a while. I sometimes think, and echoing what Alderperson Verhasselt says, that once in a while I think we pay a little bit more for people because we have the residency as well. We're, you don't give something without getting something. And I think, I think the price is a bit high. Thank you. And we have one more, Alan Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, talent pool. The more flexible the living locale, the greater the talent pool that we might attract. I think the kind of talent that we want to bring in is talent that's going to be stable, consistent, committed to the city. And sometimes you have young professionals who uh, move up the ladder. They would be more attracted to the greater community, perhaps, than to the city for residence. But I would prefer the long-term employee who loves this place. It's an attractive community. It's a cheap community compared to Milwaukee or Chicago or many other places. So there are wonderful people to bring in with plenty of talent who will want to stay here a long time. Those are the kinds of people I think we want for department heads in this community. So, voting against it. Well, I think uh, Omer Vassell, if you want to go. Thank you. I just wanted to add, I guess, you know, I agree with everything that's been said here, but I think Alderman Gish uh, throws a little caution out there, and I think rightfully so, that we should be open in particular situations. Again, having been on salary and grievance, we hear a lot of different situations. And if we're stuck in a situation where we simply cannot find a candidate, you know, for a long duration of time, I think we need to open up to things like this and be willing to make a one-time exemption. Not necessarily go and change our general ordinances, but be open to making one-time exemptions rather than settling for something or someone less. So, thank you, Mr. President. And again, this this is a, a good discussion. I think this is one of those uh, issues that I see the, the lights in front of me pop up like a Christmas tree, and uh, everybody wants to to weigh in, and that's good. I um, I would suspect that the uh, the uh, Resolution will be voted down, and quite frankly, I don't, I don't blame you because you're being responsive to your constituents as you should be. So this time we'll call a roll. <clears throat> okay. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? No. Alk? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Manny? No. That was no? Thank you. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure I'm on a roll here with the no's. Okay, Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. And Rinfleisch? No. 15 no's. Motion carries. In ordinance is introduced 10 2561, lies over. 2562 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 2453, resolution number 2440708 by all the person born, amending the composition of the Marina and Harbor Committee. Vice President Born. Thank you, Your Honor. Aye. Moran. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. 
Ionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2454, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I might, I'd like to put 2454, 2455, 2456, and 2457. Please do. They all relate to assessments. Passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. I'm sorry, Gisha. Somebody coughed. <laughs> Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhassel? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2357, General Ordinance Number 930708, by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer. dollars per year. Um, that is what uh, she agreed to do for the two-year term when she ran. Um, $18,000 doesn't cover a lot with all the hours she's put into this. Um, she's just doing a, a, a phenomenal job from what I understand. I've not had any, heard anybody say that she's not doing it, but hopefully both the council and uh, the citizens. Is there a motion? Yes, sir. Is there a second to that? There's an, a motion to amend the document. Yes, sir. There's a second to that. Under discussion, on the amendment only. And please read the amendment. Uh, the amendment is to amend year 2008 from 35000 to 25000 So an I vote would, would make it 25000 for 08. Under discussion on the amendment, Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I feel as if this is a matter of law and order, and I feel as if um, 35000 is not too is not too much, and that we should consider what's being done for the good of the city. The police department is benefiting from this. The building department. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just wonder if my colleague from the second district could talk about his rationale for mark available out there, whether it's in the area, the state, the region. If the, some member from the municipal court committee could maybe expand upon how these numbers have come to be where they are. Alderman Kittleson, yes. you're a member of the committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, I am a member of that committee. And that we did go into closed session. I was not at that. I was not at that. Um, one side of it is from a budget side. Uh, we've budgeted X amount of revenue from the municipal court and X amount of pay for the judge. Any time, any dollar we're going to be raising affects our budget, whether it's $15,000 or $7,000. Money's got to come from somewhere. Um, the other part is... There was a deal made, you know? When you take out the papers and you run, you put out the lawn signs. I agree with uh, Alderperson Clayunas regarding the fair and equitable and the money, and I, and I guess I really don't have a problem with the money, but there was a deal made with the uh, unhappy with the, with the salary she's receiving. This salary was based on projections and, th and information that we generated out of that committee. We checked with a new I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> I want you to know that we have the cheapest legal team, if you call her a team, in Sheboygan County. We have a deal. And the hours that she puts in surpass broadly, as has been mentioned. And when the, the voting booth that we were thinking of, the 18,000, I don't think people were thinking of that. I think they were thinking of a municipal court where uh, judgments could be coming out faster and the law would be enforced more quickly. Alderman yeah. Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, thank you for the comments as well. And, and I just ask myself these questions. Is, is the judge doing the job? And I believe she is. And is the court working? And I believe I, I can answer yes on both counts. So I would uh, like counsel to take that into consideration uh, when voting on this. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree with what was, a lot of what was said. And when I voted yesterday, I never thought once about how much that person was making. I was voting for who I thought would be best fit for that position. And four years ago, the committee and Rod the Alderman were very conservative about what we were going to pay somebody because it was a very controversial item. And it stalled quite a bit, and it almost didn't happen because Half of the people thought it was a good idea, and the other half thought it was a bad idea. And I think it turned out to be a really good idea. But we were very conservative four years ago. Thank you. Alderman Hessel. 
<coughs> Thank you, Honor. Again, I'd like to support this resolution here. I guess I'm just having trouble with knowing what the basis is for these numbers. You know, I, I keep hearing that we're getting a good deal, that she's working more hours than she signed up for. So, but how, being a member of Salary and Grievance, we're always talking about comparables, whether we're dealing with union issues or non rep issues. There's a constant comparison to somebody else. They're making this much and so on. I'm not convinced that we're underpaying the, that we're not underpaying the person for all we know. I mean, do we have that understanding? I guess I'll throw that question out there again. Do we have that understanding? Is 35,000 too little or is it too much or is it comparable to other Wisconsin judges in other cities? Vice President Boren, last one. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to answer, try to answer some of Alderman Verhassel's questions. I attended quite a few meetings of the municipal court uh, committee and uh, uh, if you look at what other judges are making in Wisconsin, municipal court judges, for the amount of revenue that they're bringing in, uh, our judge is, uh, is, is underpaid. And if we're going, and what's causing the additional hours is that because collections were not going well, people were not paying their fines, another, uh, another remedy she came to collect the money was to do summons hearings and writ, writs of commitment. Uh, and what that means is uh, she would have people in for, for summons hearings that weren't paying their fines, and then if they still weren't willing to pay their fines, then she does a writ of commitment, which means they have to go to jail. And uh, once she instituted that policy, collections went up substantially. If we're going to stay at an $18,000 salary, uh, I, can, I consider giving her the raise up to $35,000, the cost of doing business, because if we don't get the raise, uh, that means that the, I would estimate that the collections are going to be about $200,000 less than we're, we're budgeting for for 2008. So I think giving her the raise uh, up to $35,000 is really a good deal if, we're gonna, if the court's going to be collecting a couple hundred thousand dollars more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on the amendment, please read it again. Okay, um, and I vote, it's an amendment to change the 2008 from $35,000 annual salary to 25000 So an I vote would move it to twenty-five. Okay. Please, please call the roll. Balk? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? Yes. Heidemann? Yes. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Manny? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Thank you. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. And Boren? No. Six ayes, nine noes. Motion fails. The resolution is as it, as it stands, and that motion was made to put it upon its passage. <coughs> Any more discussion on the original resolution? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 2563 will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 2564 lies over. Other matters, Attorney McLean? 2565, it's an RO by the city clerk submitting a petition from neighbors who share an alley on Bluff Avenue between 6th and 7th Streets and are showing their support to pave the alley and are hopeful that this could tie into the 6th Street resurfacing project scheduled for early this summer. That goes to Public Works. 2566, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Edward Bajic requesting that the open leashed dog friendly area on Calumet Street get consideration for an enclosed dog park. That goes to public, yeah, public works. 
2567 is a communication from Bob Ginther of Rebuilding Together Sheboygan County requesting waiving the building permit fees and dumpster fees so that they can renovate homes for low income and elderly and disabled homeowners. It goes to finance. 2568 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to law and licensing. 2569 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of credit-based asset servicing and securitization, LLC versus Gary Caker et al. That will be referred to risk management. That could be referred to risk management of the new council. Of the new council. Thank you. I'm sorry, what did you say? Risk of the new. What are these here? Those are just extras. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.